guys do today is, actually I'm going to pass two things out to you. One is this cheat sheet that you're going to glue into your notebook, so you should have your glue out right now. And the other is this paragraph that we're going to use. Don't glue that in, just set it to the side. I thought that was wrong. No, it's good. So, okay, today we're going to talk about varying sentence beginnings. So if you saw today what we're talking about, we're varying sentence beginnings as opposed to other parts of sentences. So I'm going to have you guys write something in just a second. First, I want to have you read this paragraph. This is, you guys know what Peggy is? Yes. It's a trip you're going to go on later on this year. So this says, I had a great time at camp this year. I followed the packing list, so I had all the things I really needed. The bus to Peinas left early in the morning on Monday, and we arrived in camp that afternoon. We had a great time playing in the stream. I caught two frogs. We also went hiking and repelling, and we even spent the night at a real camp where we had to pitch our own tents. I wish every day was Peinas. This is not a terrible paragraph, but it's got some mistakes in the beginnings of the sentences in terms of variety. Okay, so when we look at that, why don't you look at this first one right here? I. Do we have any other sentences close that start with I? I. The next one. <laughs> the next one. The next one. Okay. Where? No. I, no. So I had all the things I needed. Okay. So here's what I want to talk about. People asked last hour asked about this too. Actually, we do have two sentences combined with the appropriate comma connector, right? Yep. So it does sound to your reader sometimes like it's the beginning of a new sentence because could it be by itself? Yeah. Yes. So and even though it's not actually, it sounds repetitive. I, 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 I. We have lots of them, right? Mm -hmm. What are some other sentence beginnings you see? We. We. We actually have two we's, we, right? Yeah. We Where's the three? We are not. Ah, here we go. We yes. are not, not in the beginning, the, where we, we arrive. Where? Like. And we even, because we have a comma connector, so it sounds again like a sentence. And, and then we arrive. Monday yeah. and we arrive in town. Yes, on Monday and we arrive again. A comma connector mm -hmm. used appropriately, but then it sounds like another sentence beginning. So we have a lot of I, we have a lot of we, and the only other real one we have is the. Now there's nothing wrong with starting your sentences with those, except for the fact that if you do it all at once, multiple times in one chunk, it starts to sound repetitive. So that's why today's lesson is about varying the beginnings of your sentences. Okay? So all the things we change are going to be in the beginnings of your sentences today. So let me erase this and show you what we can turn it into. Okay, we can turn it into this. So do you notice that all the things I've added are in red? Okay, and where are they falling in this paragraph in each sentence? Where do they come in each sentence? All the things I've changed. In the beginnings. In the beginnings, because we're focusing on varying or changing the beginnings of our sentences. Yes, you can change lots of parts. Today we're focusing on, focusing on the beginning. So let's read and see the differences. Unlike last year, I had a great time at camp this year. Because I followed the packing list, I had all the things I really needed. After leaving school by bus early in the morning on Monday, we arrived in camp that afternoon. Playing in the stream at camp, I caught two frogs. Inspired by nature, we also enjoyed hiking and repelling. At Peinas, we spent the night in the real outdoors, pitching our own tents. To add to the adventure, we even cooked our own dinner. Sadly, now I'm back in school. How I wish every day was, was Peinas. So all the things that we added made this paragraph more interesting, but they're all the beginnings of the sentences. That's what I want you to notice, because that's the technique, or those are the techniques we're going to be focusing on today. Okay? Okay. So I'd like for you to take this paragraph about fall. I'd like for you to read it. it. says, My favorite time of the year is fall. There are many outdoor activities to do in the fall. I enjoy hiking in the woods and looking at the changing leaves. I once collected, uh, ooh, this is not the one that says, on the new copy it says, I like to collect every color of leaf that I find. The weather finally cools off enough to wear different clothes. I can begin wearing warm, fuzzy sweaters. Fall is the best time of year. Look at your, your paragraph. Does it have repetitive beginnings of sentences? Yes. Right. Same thing. We have lots of eyes. Okay? And there's some other things in there, too. And, like, she always says, like, fall. Say it again. Like, she always says, says fall, so it's, like, 
very time of the year is fall. Fall is the best time. There are many, many outdoor activities to do in the fall. So, yeah, there are some other things we could change. We could change it to um, autumn at some point, right? But today I want to focus on the techniques that we're going to use to change the beginnings of our sentences. So I'd like for you to flip this over where it's blank on the back side. On the back side, I'd like for you to write something. Before we do anything, I'd like for you to write seven ways to vary beginnings of sentences. Okay? And go ahead and number one through seven, leave a little space. So it should stretch all the way down your page. One, two, three, four, all the way down your page. Leave yourself some space. Because we're going to learn seven different ways to do that. And those are all the ways you actually just saw in the Peggy Nades paragraph. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take this junky paragraph that doesn't sound very good, and you guys are going to practice those techniques. I'm going to teach you a technique. You're going to put it in here. Okay, so we're going to really change this up. It's going to look a lot different. In fact, you can either add a whole new sentence in, or maybe you can switch around something that's already there. doesn't matter to me. Okay? So what we're going to be doing now is learning the seven ways, or the seven techniques. So while you're on the back side, on number one, I would like for you to write dash I-N-G. Okay, dash ing word. Okay, so when we have an ing word here, meaning a verb that uses an ing, and there's there's names for these, but right now what's most important to me is that you know how to use this technique, not that you know what to call these kinds of words. Okay, so an ing word. Using, using it at the beginning of the sentence can make your sentence sound more interesting. So this example says, breathing the clean air of the Andes is a refreshing experience. So when you do this, you're going to have to say something is something else. So you might have to use it is something or something that you did because of it. I did something else. So let me give you an example. Jumping out of bed, I fell on the floor. Cleaning my room, I found my shoes. Okay, so you can say something that you did while that was happening, or you can say something that is. Um, jumping out of bed is the best way to get up. Cleaning my room is a big pain. So say something after it, because if you just say breathing the clean air, you've actually made a fragment. And what we're trying to do here is not make our sentences worse. If we're making fragments, are we making our sentences worse? Yes. Yes. Okay? So fragments is like a piece of the sentence. A fragment is like a piece of the sentence. So we could have something at the beginning, but we want to have a complete sentence total. And usually to do that, you're going to have to say that it is something else, whatever your ing word is, or that you did something because of that. Jumping out of bed, I fell. Jumping out of bed, is the best way to get up. So what you're going to do right now is you're going to look at this paragraph about fall. Where could you put this technique? Where could you have an ing word starting a sentence? Remember, it's got to be the first word in the sentence. You can't say, I like jumping on the bed. Because what does your sentence really start with? I. I. So you've got to have something that starts with the ing. Jumping out of bed is, or jumping out of bed I. You choose what you're going to add into here. Obviously, this paragraph is not jumping out of the bed. So you're going to have to use a sentence already there or create one that goes in here. When you think you've got a correct one, I'll come around and check. Raise your hand, and I'll come look for you whenever you're ready.
ladies and gentlemen, on your cheat sheet that you glued into your notebook, maybe you should look at this slide right here and write your helper note. Okay? If I were you, right below that cheat sheet on this slide, I would write it maybe a little bit bigger. I would write your first bullet or your little asterisk. That it's got to be comma. I'm sorry. That it's got to be is something. So my whole sentence, breathing in the clean air is a refreshing experience. Jumping off the bed is dangerous. Or it's got to be something that there's a, that you are doing as a result of it. Jumping off the bed, comma, I, what happened? Or it could be we, even, or they. Okay? Maybe you write those on your cheat sheet right now so that later on, when you're home doing this by yourself, you remember, ah, that's the clue of how to make it work in the sentence if I'm stuck. Okay? Let's move on to number two. Flip your page on the back and get ready for number two. Mistakes. Yes. It always happens to me that it's hard to add like the transitions because I always start with a verb. With a what? With a verb. Uh huh. Like, um, yeah, like um, I I don't know an example right now, but I always say. We do. Yeah, but we can look. But that's that's part of adding things in makes it really hard because then it changes your sentence structure, or you're worried about your sentence structure. You got a great idea, but sometimes it doesn't come across on the page in the correct way. So what we're going to do is look at number two right now for ED, and that's an ED word, okay? So number two says an ED word, and that means something that has an ending that is part of ED, and usually it's a past tense sounding word. It doesn't work with all words. For instance, if you said the word walk and added ED on the end, Walked to the store, I, does that sound like it's going to make a good sentence? Mm -hmm. Sounds awkward, right? So I've given you, give me some, a second here. Open this door. I've given you an example here, but I've also given you some helper example words that you could try to use. And once you try a few of these, sometimes you recognize more. So the first one says, cursed by my forgetfulness, I forgot to pack water shoes for camp. So I want you to notice that this over here is a result of that. Okay? Yes. You have marker on your Oh, thank you. Which side? This one? Yeah. Is it gone? Yeah. Is Wait, it still there? See it. Yeah, it's still there. Oh, I'll have to get it. This is what I was saying. You guys have to warn me when I have marker on my face. I just noticed. Good work. Thank you, Matthew. So I'll get it in a second. So this needs to be a result of that. So Looking down here at your examples, disguised, unnerved, surprised, shocked, terrified, confused, excited, all of these examples work for something like this. So you could try to use one of these or try to find another one. If you can't find one and you're freaking out, use one of my examples. I will tell you this, something I want you to write on your cheat sheet. I got that. Okay. Some helper words to go with these are by about, and of. So I want you to even look at my first example. You can't say cursed necessarily by itself, but it does work, sometimes you can, but it does work better if you have a helper word like by. Cursed by this, this thing happens. Okay? Disguised by my mask, blah, blah, blah. Surprised about my grade, I cheered. Or you could even say surprised by. Terrified of snakes, I ran. All of these things are a result of what you were using your ED word with. Okay? So sometimes you need a by, sometimes you need about, sometimes you need an of to help those words. If you want to use something that's not on one of my examples, go for it. If you're like, mm, I don't know if I can do that. Try one of my examples. Right now, find a place to put it in your paragraph. This one right here that you're creating. That's not very good so far that we're making it amazing. When you think you found a place, raise your hand. I'll come and check. Begin. Okay, 
so we're going to look at number three now. So number three says that we're going to use an L-Y word. So you should flip over your page and write dash L-Y word. Okay? So now we need, what we need to do now is look at the example. Unfortunately, I got terrible blisters from crossing the stream in the crummy shoes I did remember to bring. I want you to look at the punctuation used right here. What do we see? Comma. Okay, so you may end up having to use some punctuation to start this, just like some of the other ones have required commas to begin with. Okay? So, and for, unfortunately, is an example word. It's an L-Y word that's going to vary the beginnings of our sentences. I don't want you to use unfortunately in yours. Try some of the example ones that I have. You also have it glued in your notebook on your cheat sheet. So if you can't see here, you can look at your cheat sheet. You could try happily you did something. Sadly you did something. Happily, I jumped on the bed. Okay? You could try interestingly, and then tell us something that was interesting about that. Okay? Interestingly, she looked at me even though she didn't really like me. Try those examples. On your paper, your job is use these, make your own sentence that goes into your paragraph about fall. When you're ready for me to come check it, raise your hand, I'll come check you. Begin. Okay, we are on number four now. So number four, flip it on the back, please. Paper over, you're listing number four. Number four says that we are going to be using a two plus a verb. And I do want you to write what that's called. An infinitive. Now, in Spanish, this is all one word, right? Hablar. Yeah. Comer. Beber. Okay? You have actually two words hidden inside one. Right? So if you look at it, and you say in Spanish, hablar, it actually means to speak or to talk. Right? Yeah. So in English, an infinitive is actually two words put together. It's the to do something. So look at your example sentence here. To make matters worse, I ended up tripping and breaking my arm in the middle of the night because I forgot to bring a flashlight. Okay. We have used something in the beginning of our sentence that is actually two words together. It means an infinitive. There is an infinitive, but it's two words together. So you could say, to jump on the bed would be a terrible decision. Okay. To go? To go? To go to this party, I need to pay $5. Yeah. All right. So your job right now is to try to find an infinitive. I don't want you to use my example. It's an okay one to use, but I'm afraid if you use this one, it's the only one you'll be able to think of, okay, in the future. So I want you to try to use something that's not my example. Begin. Begin. 